We're moving on to the euro dollar futures contract and um, fair warning here, tricky, tricky. So you're going to want to pay attention because there's a little bit of a twist in here that uh, doesn't follow if you're trying to line up the treasury bond uh, futures contract uh, and what you know about that with euro dollar futures saying, well, I get futures. Well, no, this one's a little bit trickier. In the Treasury Bond Futures contract, you'll recall we spent some time talking about uh, the cheapest to deliver. So that implies pretty, pretty overtly that there is a bond that needs to be delivered. So the underlying of the Treasury Bond Futures contract is a Treasury Bond. We call it an interest rate future because we make a bet on the interest rate by making a bet on the direction of the price of the bond. Remember, rates and prices are inversely related, right? Well, on a euro-dollar futures contract, we're actually making a bet on the interest rate directly. There is no underlying bond. Now, there is an underlying, but it's more of a, a commitment than, than an actual asset like a bond. Nothing really changes hands in that sense like, one security passes on to another person and ownership transfers, it's more like uh, two parties are agreeing that, listen, we're going to enter into this euro dollar futures contract to lock in an interest rate on something we're going to do. Do you get that? On something we're going to do. And let's talk about that. Um, well, we need to know what a euro dollar is first. A euro dollar is any dollar, take a dollar, an American dollar, bring it outside of the borders of the U.S., and once it's deposited into a bank, it becomes a euro dollar. There it is right there. Now you may think, why is there such a big market for euro dollar futures on US dollars outside of the US? Well, the vast, I shouldn't say the vast majority, a large amount of international contracts are denominated in US dollars. A large amount of futures contracts traded around the world are traded based on a US dollar pricing system. Uh, a lot of countries that borrow uh, uh, money, even, even governments that borrow money, sometimes have to borrow money in U.S. dollars, then convert it into their own currency because they're lacking a debt market deep enough in their own market. So there's always a need outside of the U.S. for all of these U.S. dollars. So they may come to a point where there's a specific bank, Bank One, that tends to collect a whole bunch of U.S. dollars, and it has a whole bunch of U.S. dollars on hand, and there may be another bank out there, Bank 2, that is in need of some U.S. dollars at some future point in time. Uh, we'll, we'll say, well, you know what, we're going to need some U.S. dollars to help finance something over here that must be financed in U.S. dollars, so we know we have a need for U.S. dollars, and in this interbank market outside of the U.S., there's lots of U.S. dollars floating around. Sometimes banks have more, sometimes banks have less. So, the Euro-Dollar Futures contract locks in an interest rate at some future period between a deposit made by a bank that has these dollars, the bank will deposit those dollars at, in Bank 2. And Bank 2, after 90 days, will return all of those dollars uh, plus interest. And typically, uh, it, the, the return of the dollars is done at face value of whatever the face value of the loan is. So Bank 1 will make a deposit of something less than the face value, because it's a money market security. And then Bank 2, at the end of the 90 days, will return the full face value, the difference being the interest. Not the interest rate, the interest. So the contract is for the euro dollar interest rate. On the last day of settlement, it is expected that Bank 1 will then proceed to deposit in Bank 2 a sum of money. So let's have a look at what this contract looks like now. It's for three months. It's a three-month euro dollar contract. It is an interest rate future. And uh, if you think about this uh, uh, closely enough, it's a three-month euro-dollar contract, an interest rate future for some period, some future time. It must be perfectly possible to derive whatever rate that is, to derive that rate um, from forward rates implied by the yield curve for interbank lending. And we've already covered forward rates, and we know how to calculate those forward rates. We've done that. So... 
arbitrage, an arbitrage argument will say that this futures rate, the euro dollar interest rate, um, will reflect what the forward rate should be at that time. So it's an interest rate future. Uh, the contract assumes a deposit from bank one to bank two of $1 million. So the underlying in this sense is the interest rate that will be paid by the borrower or the receiver, bank two, to the depositor or the lender, bank one, for some future three-month period. So basically it looks like, uh, it, it looks like this. Uh, bank one and bank two enter into uh, a euro dollar futures agreement uh, at this date uh, that has its final settlement at this date for some three month period here and what they're doing is they're locking in an interest rate for this three month period bank one will then make a deposit with bank two uh, for uh, par minus whatever the interest not the interest rate but the interest payment is and at the end of the 100 days, the, the uh, bank two uh, will resend back to bank one 100. That becomes important later on, so pay attention to that. It's a uh, money market um, deposit, so it's based on the actual 360 uh, day convention, day count convention. Sold at discount, that's what I just said here. I'm going to expand on that later on. March, June, September, December, these are contract months within the first year uh, or the next 12 months. Uh, you'll have April, May, and you'll have all the other months filled in here. But beyond that, and these go out 10 years, it's only March, June, September, December that are listed. Settles the third Wednesday of every month. Just so, uh, you know, one of those little facts that you should know about the contract. And it's marked to market daily. Uh, all futures are marked to market daily. But this becomes important when we want to look at if we enter into a futures contract or a forward contract for the very same thing, why would they not have the same price? If it's for the same thing, but it's just a forward contract, why would it not have the same price? Well, this mark to market is going to sort of give us a hint there. So let's push forward and see what all of these words mean when we get to the example. So let's uh, let's get right into uh, the euro dollar futures, and we're going to see that. Uh, the settlement price on the uh, euro futures is for the interest rate, not for the price of the contract. And I'll get to what that means in a minute, but it's for the interest rate. So the settlement price of the futures contract is set equal to 100 minus R. And R is the actual three month euro dollar interest rate. It's expressed with quarterly compounding based on the actual 360 day count convention. So whatever we witness for R, that's the interest rate, but that would be expressed annually. When I say expressed annually, it's, it's, it's an annual rate expressed with quarterly compounding. So we do have some fixing up to do there. Now, the reason this is done, you should know why uh, it's, it's done this way, is so that you can bet on the interest rate direction intuitively. And that it's done so that every one basis point change in the interest rate equals $25. A minimum move, by the way, is a half basis point. That's the that's a minimum move. It has to move at least half a basis point, which that equals 1250. Just a little bit on the mechanics there. So, if you think that the interest rate is going to increase, if the interest rate is going to increase, what happens to the price of the bond? If the interest rate increases, this hundred minus R actually gets smaller. The bond price goes where? It goes up. If you think the interest rate is going to decrease, then this number gets larger. So keep that in mind. I'm going to expand on that later on, just so that you know that what R is there. So let's have an example, because examples sort of clear everything up. Let's say the euro dollar futures contract ends at 99.31. Step one, what does that mean, 9931? Well, that means that we can figure out what the interest rate is, not what the price of the contract is. The contract is not 9931. The interest rate is expressed within the 9931. Remember, it's 100 minus R. So if we take 100 minus, minus uh, the 9931, we get 0.69%. So one, this is our R, by the way, down here. This is R. So 100 minus 0.69 equals our settlement price, 99.31. But this is just the interest rate. We look at the settlement price of the euro dollar futures contract, we can get our interest rate, we see it's 0.69. So 
So for the three-month period, remember this is a three-month period, so we have to take one quarter of that amount, 100 minus 99.31. You'll notice that 100 minus 99.31 is the interest rate, but that's annual. We only want it for one quarter. This is the three-month. This, this will tell us how much interest we will receive based on this interest rate of 0.69, but we're only going to hold a deposit or lend or give a deposit for three months. This will give us the interest dollar amount that we will pay or receive. This is the three-month interest rate. And you'll notice 0.25. We just go to 0.25. Why? Because it's a 90-day on a 360-day convention. That's one quarter, right? So there we go. That tells us the amount of interest. We've gone from the settlement... We've taken the interest rate out to figure how much interest will, be, uh, will, will happen. Now, remember what I said. At the last settlement date, let's assume that it, con it, it settles out at 99.31 on the last day. That means that Bank 1 makes a deposit to Bank 2 and will realize... 0.69% or will earn this sum of money. But it's a money market security. So that means that bank two will pay back 100. We need to know, well now, based on this settlement and that interest rate, how much does bank one deposit with bank two? It's not 99.31. This is what we have to do. We have to come up with a, with a quote for that. Now we'll call it the futures quote. How much has to happen here? Well, remember, they're all sold at, uh, at a discount, right? So bank one will get back $100. We'll call it 100. Bank, ba bank one will receive 100 at the end of the 90 days. So how much do they have to give into bank two now? Well, the amount of the interest. The amount of interest. Because you buy money market securities at a discount, they mature at face value. So... The discount, the difference, is all interest. Not interest rate, but interest. Well, here's how we calculate our interest. So it would be 100 minus 0.25 times 100 minus 99.31. And that would give us, if you uh, work this out on your calculator, you'll get 99.8275. We're not done yet. That's just the quote. What we need to know is the contract value now. Because remember, the contract, the euro dollar contract is for $1 million. So we need a full contract price. How much does bank A deposit into ba or bank 1 deposit into bank 2? Uh, so the contract is for $1 million. It's for $1 million. We already have the price per hundred. So we just have to divide this by 100, and we will get 10,000. So that means if we were going to put in $100 deposits, we'd have to put in 10,000 of them to equal a million. So it is 10,000 times the 100 minus the 0.25 times 100 minus 99.31, 1, 2, 3, closing brackets, will give us, as you can see, this is just this, here. So it's 10,000 times 99.8275. It will be 998,275. So bank one and bank two have entered into this contract at some previous date. On the last settlement date, the quote was 9931. That means that the interest rate was 0.69. That means the interest payment for those three months can be calculated with this with this uh, with, with this calculation here, uh, uh, so that we can get a price. Bank one must deposit to bank two ninety nine point eight two seven five. Ninety days later, bank one will transfer a hundred back to bank one. Since the contract is for one million dollars, we divide it by a hundred. We get ten thousand. We multiply ten thousand by this hundred dollar quote. Bank One will deposit $998,275 with Bank Two. 90 days later, Bank Two will send $1 million back to Bank One. Do you see how that works now? 
the euro dollar futures contract is only for this look at what I'm underlining here in white pretty thickly is only for this once we have this we can then calculate how much money bank one will deposit in bank two for 90 days now to prove one other point here um, this is uh, this is our queue up here this is this is the settlement price on the euro dollar futures contract watch what happens here if if Q is 9930 instead of 9931 and you work it all the way through the system uh, you will get 998,250 notice that that is $25 less so 9931 drops down to 9930 uh, it's a loss of $25, $25 on the long position. If instead the ending quote was $99.32 and you work that all the way through this, you will get $998,300, which is a gain of $25. So the long position would now be up $25. Now here's the logic behind this. If it settles at $99.32 instead of $99.31, that represents an interest rate of 0.68%. Well, the depositor would rather get 0.69%, not 0.68%. So as the interest rate drops, the, uh, the settlement price goes up, which is why a long position, the long position is the depositor. The long position will receive. The short position is the depositee, if I can use that word, they're going to get the deposit and have to pay the interest. So if we're depositing and we're sending money out, we are the long position. So we want to be long the euro dollar futures contract because if it goes up, we want to make money simply because when we do make the loan, we make it at the settlement interest rate, not the futures rate we negotiated way, way back. All right, let's look at a really firm, concrete example now.